1 Kings 1. Let's call this one Settling Accounts with Descent, understanding that by the end of the chapter, we're going to see that Solomon is the heir apparent to David, but as the younger son, not everybody's going to be on the same page about him being the proper one to take over, uh, not the least of which is Adonijah, his older brother, who is uh, the next oldest to Absalom, who had already tried to take over the throne of Israel, and as we saw before, lost his life because of it. And in this chapter, Adonijah is going to walk an eerily similar path when we are introduced first to David, who is, in this chapter, getting up in years. It's going to say David's old and he's cold. And one of his servants or some of his servants are going to get the bright idea of saying, why don't we get a young pretty girl to warm him up? I'm not kidding. Anyway, that's the idea. And they find a young Shunammite woman who is known for her beauty to come and serve David and try to keep him warm, even though he never sleeps with the young woman. She does become his servant. So in a situation where David is simply worried about the basics, uh, his son Adonijah is maneuvering behind his back because he also has the bright idea of taking the throne for himself. And that is exactly what he is going to do as he starts off uh, in a lot of the same ways that Absalom does, getting himself chariots and 50 men uh, for lack of a better term, an entourage to make his presence seem great. And so with that entourage, he is going to start throwing parties. And uh, he's not going to invite everybody to the party we're going to find out. Uh, ironically enough, he's going to invite all his brothers except Solomon. <laughs> and the folks will find out who are loyal to Solomon. However, he is going to lobby some folks who might not necessarily be on the same page with Solomon among them, Joab, and unfortunately, Abiathar, a name we haven't necessarily mentioned a whole lot, but one who was absolutely loyal to David in his hardships, and that is actually going to save his life, as we're going to see in the next chapter. But before we get there, Nathan is going to intervene as he sees the trouble brewing. And so he is going to go to Bathsheba and say, you may not understand the significance of this, because he may designate you an enemy of the state, for lack of a better term, and get rid of both you and Solomon. So we may need to, uh, while David can still make the decision on his own, even though it seems like Adonijah has done a pretty good job of taking over, we might need to bring this to David. And that's exactly what they do. And so he sends Bathsheba to break the news to David that Adonijah has made himself king. And he is going to come in and endorse her word. So it's not simply her standing on her own. And Nathan, likewise, is going to pose the question, did you designate Adonijah to be king? And even though David seems to be struggling in his later years, he has enough strength to gather his servants together to get the horn of oil for anointing, his own mule, his own throne, and the trumpets to announce that Solomon is actually the king. And so while Adonijah is holding a feast and patting himself on the back as the new king of Israel, all the people are actually going to see David give his official endorsement to Solomon, and the tide is going to turn. Solomon is actually going to be anointed king, at which point Adonijah's conscience is going to kick in, and he is not going to stand up bold as though he is the rightful king. We're going to see in the next chapter, he already knew that Solomon was the rightful king from God, not just David. But before that, he is going to quake in fear because he knows he's done wrong. And so he is going to run to the altar to grab hold of the horns of the altar, ironically enough, seeking God after the fact when he could have saved himself the trouble by simply asking God beforehand, am I the designated king, heir apparent to David? So now it's better late than never. Him uh, running to the horns of the altar is going to uh, proceed Solomon actually showing him mercy, not taking his life, but telling him to the degree he proves himself to be a worthy man, he'll get to keep his life. But much like Rick James noticed in the famous skit that Dave Chappelle did about his life, cocaine is a heck of a drug. We are going to see how not just cocaine, but ambition is a heck of a drug that's going to provoke Adonijah to risk his life in ways that seem to justify logic.